Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle, and Today, I'm talking about a topic that I have personally been exploring more and absolutely loving, and that is stepping into my feminine energy in order to help my manifestation journey. Um, This is a very kind of flowy personal episode because I don't have, um, there's not as much like tangible stuff. It's more so it's shifted the way I feel during my manifestation journey. And I just thought it would be really helpful because from what I've noticed, some of the patterns that we struggle with as we're manifesting, like waiting and not knowing and feeling obsessive um, and feeling that desire to do more and know that our desire is coming with certainty, a lot of those actually live in the masculine energy. So as I've been going on my own spiritual journey, just reflecting, reading, diving deeper and deeper. This is something that came up and I thought it would be really helpful for a wide variety of us. Whether you're gen like through gender, feminine or masculine, that doesn't matter. Um, it's just we all have a feminine energy and a masculine energy within us. So it's more so how do you tap into both? I think as a society, we are very much so tapped into masculine energy through things like we're very result oriented. We love hitting milestones. We um, love like being assertive as a society, like speaking our voice, especially social media has created more of that. Um, We love taking action. You see the things on discipline. You see the things on consistency action. That is me too. I talk about that because it's actually helped me a lot. We love structure. Um, Masculine energy is very like certain and kind of that provider mentality. Like let me go get in order to provide. Let me go do something in order to create a certain ripple effect or a certain action. Um, And masculine energy is very speed oriented, very fast, very time aware. And this might ring a bell for you if you're like, when is my manifestation coming? Where is it? Why is it taking so long? These are all little indicators that you might be a little bit more in your masculine energy when it comes to how you're approaching manifestation. And this is a bit of a generic statement, but I think naturally a lot of our systems and society have a masculine lens on it, right? The corporate ladder, school, you take a test, you pass or fail corporate ladder. You have yearly check-ins. You have a boss that you're going to and that you have to kind of listen to what they're saying, Um, which I'm not dogging on any of these, like no implications whatsoever. It's more so just understanding the energetics. It is a very masculine society that we're raised in. The way things get done, the order of our society has a masculine energy. And I'm not referring to male dominated. Um, I'm not referring to gender. I'm referring to energetics. So please don't um, kind of take this out of context. This is literally referring to the energetics of how things get done. There is a yin and a yang in everything. There is feminine and masculine in anything, in all genders and all humans. So understanding that as a society, we have been trained to have a more orderly, structured, result-oriented, on a timeline kind of format. So naturally, when you step into manifestation, you step into this new concept, this new phenomenon, we tend to approach it a little bit more masculine because that is what we know. That is the way we process information. That is the way we get things done. It means nothing in terms of you're trying to be masculine. It's just the way we know how to do things. It's the way our society operates, that order, structure, rigidity, 
um, formation, kind of very geometric is kind of the image that's coming to mind. And I love that, right? Like I am a Virgo moon. I love being organized. I love that stuff. I love structure. But I started to notice when there was an element and a layer where my need and desire for structure was actually hurting my manifestation journey a lot more. And that's when I started to really go on this kind of rabbit hole of what is feminine energy? How do you show up in feminine energy? What does that even mean? And consciously, cerebrally, I know what it means. But like, I, for a long time, didn't understand what that felt to be like. I didn't know what that felt to show up as, as a human, right? Because I was just at a bachelorette party with some great girls, but in conversations, right? We still show up very masculine. You're asserting your dominance. You're asserting like, this is my area of expertise. I'm so proud of it. Um, You're asserting your career progression. Like we have these natural tendencies, whether you're a man or a woman or whatever gender you resonate with, like we have these um, assertions and we have these very, very masculine ways to approach things. And the feminine side, especially in today's society, is seen as like that weaker aspect. Masculine, you associate with strong. Feminine, you associate with weaker. And I think that because we're so used to tapping into the masculine energy, that the feminine energy of manifestation feels so difficult. And if you notice, feminine energy as it is, is very soft. It is very intuitive and emotion driven. It's very in your body, not in your mind. Um, Even though most of us approach manifestation from our minds first, it's very um, like sensual, pleasure focused, very empathetic, emotional awareness, very authentic in your expression, not fitting into the norm, not kind of doing things on a mass scale, very creative um, and expressive, very, I don't even think nurturing makes the difference here, but it is very nurturing. I don't think it relates to manifestation too much. And very, this is the biggest thing that I've struggled with is it is very slow and intentional. Um, So I'm going to kind of hit on a lot of these topics, but That is the vast difference between the masculine energy and the feminine energy, specifically when it comes to manifestation, because I think we are so well versed in masculine energy because it's how we show up in society for the most part that we also take it into the way we manifest. So what that looks like in manifestation is you have a very structured approach to your spiritual practice. I even teach spiritual practice in a structured way, except when you grab my guide or do stuff in the app with me, it is still leaving room for intuitiveness. I want you to get self-aware and then go structured because I know that's the way our brains work. However, um, masculine manifestation can be you're doing your spiritual practice with the intention to receive a result. It is like the underlying, very subtle nuances that are actually impacting your manifestation journey. You're like, okay, if I say my affirmations today, then maybe my desire will come not tomorrow, but maybe Thursday morning at 8 a.m., right? Like we tend to adopt this masculine, structured, timed, result-oriented approach in manifestation. And to an extent that can be helpful. But when I have was kind of observing where a lot of us were struggling, it was all in these feminine energy concepts. It was in the concepts of how do I trust in the unknown, that uncertainty where masculine is so certain. How do I be patient when my manifestation isn't here yet? That's the time thing slowing down. How do I soften and surrender relaxing? How do I do that? I don't know how to relax. I'm just on edge and I'm anxious and I'm tense all the time. That's very masculine. So all of these struggles, I was like, this is such a pattern. And so that is why I kind of did an experiment on myself where I was like, what if I tapped into and adopted more feminine energy as I'm manifesting something and kind of flip my own energy scales and apply it to what I'm manifesting and see how that works. And oh my gosh, let me tell you, it made the biggest difference. My desires, um, felt so much less like frustrating to get to. I feel like when they came in, it was just like a, like 
Uh, it felt like magic. And I say that in the most fairy tale ask way on purpose. It literally felt like, like a little sparkle in my day. Um, I got news that I wanted. I got to connect with people I've been wanting to connect with. And it felt way less sticky and way less dreadful along the way. And I think the process, like the in-between phase that we all talk about during manifestation can either be like dreadful and sticky and just like, oh, why isn't it here yet? Or it can be soft, receiving, receptive, feminine, sensual, and it's way more fun doing it the feminine way if I had to choose. So I have been doing it the masculine way for a while. It has worked. There's no um, I'm not saying like it doesn't work because I think for a long time I have manifested in a masculine way and it never, it didn't always feel good. Like I spent a lot of days anxious and obsessive and I was like, where the heck is my desire? And I hated feeling like that. I didn't enjoy that part. Um, but my desire still ended up coming. Maybe it took longer. I can't guarantee. I can't confirm that. Maybe it took a little bit longer because I had to process those feelings. But when I, I did this experiment kind of last month and this month, and I've been manifesting some stuff. And when I approach this more feminine energy, they have been flowing in way more like buttery is the best way I can explain it. It feels soft. It feels melty. It feels luxurious. It feels delicious. And I never thought I could say that personally as like a very type A controlling person. I never thought I could say that about how I felt in the in-between of manifestation. And looking back, I think it's a win-win, right? I think we're doing manifestation with a structured approach. Like we're still doing structure. I still do my mental, energetic, emotional, physical, spiritual. I still do my process, but I'm allowing myself to have a feminine energy and not do it for the result. I'm doing it for how I feel as I'm manifesting, as I'm committing to my spiritual practice. I'm not just doing it to be like, where the heck is my desire now and looking. So it's, it makes sense to me now looking back on it, why this has been working so well for me, because I have less resistance. I have less pressure on time. I have less searching energy and searching creates more searching as we know. So naturally it makes a lot of sense, but it took me 15, I'm older than that now, 16 years for it to click and realize that it actually was just about tapping into my feminine energy a little bit more as I'm manifesting. Like it took me so long to connect these dots and maybe you understand this already. It took me forever. So kudos to you if you know this, but for me, it's been like, oh, like I am allowed to soften even when I have no idea how it's coming, even when my 3D doesn't look anything like I want, I'm allowed to soften. Wow. Let me try it. If I don't like it, I can always go back to anxiety stress ball. I That's always an option. I'm good at that. I know how that is. But let me just try. Let me just try it on for size and see how it feels. And I kid you not, like my desire started flowing in so much easier. And I wasn't like hating the process. I think for a long time, I spent time hating the in-between, but now it's like I get to enjoy the in-between, meaning I get to enjoy my life, meaning my manifestation is probably going to come faster because I am happier. I am in a little bit more of a flow state rather than this resistance lack state. So I feel like it logically makes sense, but for some reason, it took me so long to actually... um understand it and see and experience the differences where like now my desires genuinely feel way more effortless just because I am practicing some of these more unseen feminine energy principles. Hi, beautiful friend. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I wanted to hit pause for 15 seconds and share with you about my spiritual membership I created to help you raise your vibration and manifest with ease. I created Affirm It so you can have access to all, and I really mean all of the spiritual tools you need to step into your higher self and watch your dreams manifest with ease. If you're really ready to dive into your spirituality and connect with your highest self, I invite you to join the Affirm It membership. More details are in the show notes if you're interested. And now let's jump back in. 
My practice from the looks of it looks the same. I am still doing my manifestation as a lifestyle. I'm still doing my affirmations. I'm still doing the things I always do, but the underlying energy that I'm doing it with is not to get a result. It is not forceful. It is not logical. It is not like speed and I need this certain sign to prove that I'm on the right track. Like it is not in a needy way. It's not in that chasing energy truly. Like we say chase versus attract. It's not chasing. It is now I'm doing this practice because I'm enjoying how I feel during the practice. I am way more in my body and less in my mind as I'm doing the practice. So I'm dropping a little bit lower, like my energy is still on my mind, but I'm dropping a little bit more into my heart than into my mind while I'm doing these things. I am spending a little bit more time relaxing and softening rather than gripping on so tightly as to what, where is my desire? I am spending time allowing myself to be like, hey, Maybe I am manifesting more money, but today I want to focus on feeling better in my physical body because I had a little bit of shame come up and I want to work on that. It's allowing yourself to be fluid in what you're focusing on, which I always have done, but I sometimes felt like I wasn't doing it right versus now it's like, no, like that authenticity, that expression and honesty is a really helpful guiding force for me. And allowing myself to feel that sensual, playful, pleasurable energy in my day to day, not in a sexual way, not like in intimacy, but like in just like being alive and enjoying like each moment for what it is. Those are the super small shifts that I made where it's like, what is like feminine goddess pile? Like that was the question I asked myself. And that was like the symbolism that resonated with me the most. I was like, okay, what is a goddess energy like? And how do I embody goddess energy? Um, And for me, it was like allowing myself to like put on mascara more. I was like, I don't wear makeup, but it's like, what if I did wear makeup? Does that make me feel a little bit more flirty? And if not makeup, I would just put um, like castor oil on my lashes, which is good for your lash growth. So it's like what things, whether it's physical, whether it's beauty rituals, whether it is like putting on dresses, some people love putting on flowy dresses, like whatever feminine energy feels like to you. For me, it's softening. It's like, I love... um, just like having a cup of tea and sitting and like not being rushed. Like I have this chronic thing where I hate being rushed, but I also always feel like I'm behind and in a rush. So teaching myself to like, I can sit quietly, patiently in a relaxing way and have a cup of tea and genuinely give myself permission to find pleasure in that. I'm allowed to do that. And that's what was so helpful for me in stepping into my feminine energy, in allowing myself to say, hey, this can be a more feminine approach. Other things you can do to enhance and tap into your feminine energy um, is get creative, whether that is through writing, through painting, through cooking, um, creating anything, typically with our hands, but maybe it's making music. Maybe it is, I don't know, crafting, but getting creative um, is a really, really beautiful way to tap in your feminine energy and finding little micro moments in your day to feel that feminine energy. So for me, it was like putting on mascara or like braiding my hair um, or going on a leisurely walk rather than trying to be back at 8 a.m. Like it can be very, very unique to you. It doesn't have to be typical feminine things. Like it doesn't have to be cooking and buying yourself flowers and taking a bath. Maybe that is feminine for you, but don't feel the pressure to use other people's definitions of feminine energy. Let yourself use your own definitions of feminine energy. So for me, I just felt like this distinction was so helpful and it's so subtle. And so I'm trying to give you as many tangible examples as possible, but like the intent with which you approach manifestation is so subtle. So take a look at like, what is the intent in which I am doing my spiritual practice? What is the intent in which I am manifesting and see if it has an underlying tone, like a undertone of feminine energy or masculine energy. And allow yourself to do that. For me, it felt like a lot more ease. It felt like a lot more in my body. And a huge one, actually, I forgot to say this, was tapping my body. You don't have to do EFT tapping. You can. But like just 
touching my body and like feeling my emotions where they were in my body, tapping my heart, activating different chakras with my hands, like getting, creating that mind body connection again, I think was so helpful for me. So play with this. Um, I don't have this mastered fully yet, but um, it is something that I think has really, really helped me tap into some of the things like surrender, patience, enjoying the now, managing my emotions, expressing my emotions. Um, it's really helped me on my journey and I really hope it helps you too. So I love you and I hope this episode resonated with you. Thanks for being here as always. And if you do have a second, um, reviews make the biggest difference and I am so bad at asking for them. But if you enjoy any of our episodes, literally taking five to 10 seconds to write a review means the world to me and it really, really helps um, the podcast grow. So if you're on iTunes, tunes or Spotify, it really, really helps. So thank you in advance. And I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate, interview the podcast and share it on your social media. So I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy.